Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. Today's pencast is about sums and products. Now, if you've seen other pencasts that I've created, or maybe you've attended some of my lectures, you will know that I like to be lazy if I feel like I can get away with it. And today's video is all on that topic. Sums and products are basically shorthand for writing down a long sum or a long product in a quick and easy form. Imagine, for example, you are adding together the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Maybe you're counting the number of dots on a die, for example. Now, we can write this down a lot shorter by using summation notation. And for summation, we use the Greek letter sigma, a capital sigma even. Uh, you might see people adding these things. It helps to maybe differentiate it from a quickly written E. And this sigma, to denote the sum, will have some stuff below here, above here, and to the right of it. To the right of it, we say what we want to sum. Okay, well, I don't know really what I want to sum. I guess I want to sum some numbers. Hmm. Below it, we write down a lower bound, and above it, we write down some upper bound. Well, the upper bound is easy. We want to stop when we've reached six. So let's put that down. The lower bound, I guess, is one. But then what do we want to sum? Well, just like you may have learned in your programming course, we are going to introduce a variable for this. And just like in your for loops in Java, we will call it i. And we say, we start at i is one, and we continue until i equals six, and we sum i. These two things mean exactly the same. They are equivalent, equal, whatever you want to call it. Let's try another example. I have a sum from i equals one to 10 of i times i plus one. What does this represent? Well, let's fill in i equals one. We get one times two. Plus, it's a summation of, well, with i equals two, we get two times three. Plus, if i equals 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7, 7 times 8, 8 times 9, 9 times 10, and 10 times 11. You can see now why I would much prefer this notation over writing it all out. Okay. So this is a sum, then what about a product? Well, imagine that we're looking at the factorial operator. N factorial, let's take N equals six again, is six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay, well, great, we already have the factorial operator for it, but we could also write this as a product, which we represent with a capital letter pi, again from Greek, from i equals 1 to 6 of i. The only difference is, rather than adding, we are multiplying. And again, as another quick example, from i equals 1 to 3, oh, this is a sum, we want to put the product now. From i equals 1 to 3 of um, y, i squared, maybe, would equal 1 squared times 2 squared times 3 squared, which is 36. So there we go. A shorthand to write summations and a shorthand to write products. We will see these a lot in our proofs moving forward. That's all for this video. See you around for the next one.